Hello everyone, welcome to Learner's Talk. This is Pumangi here and today we'll be talking about hand sanitizer which is immensely popular this year. So we'll be looking at each point one by one. First one, used to decrease infectious agents such as germs and bacteria on hands. So it is basically a type of disinfectant which kills microorganisms present on our hands. Second one, Lou Hernandez, a nursing student from Bakersfield, California, discovered that alcohol in gel form could be a good alternative to soap and water when not available, thus becoming the inventor of hand sanitizer. We have a pic of that lady over here. You can see on the top left. So thanks to the lady for inventing hand sanitizer, which is uh, very important during this pandemic and which is also very important in hospitals. Third point, it was used by nurses and doctors in hospitals for it is vital to keep hands free of bacteria and viruses to avoid spreading them from patient to patient. It is less effective at killing norovirus and clostridium difficial and more. So as I said earlier that uh, it is very important in hospitals as well. So it was basically meant to be used in hospitals to avoid the spreading of infection for example when a surgery or an operation is being carrying out the chances of spreading of infection is very high so these are the situation where there is a, the need to use these sanitizers so it was basically meant to be used in hospitals fourth point Proper usage and alcohol concentration determines the effectiveness of the pro product. So we need to look after the direction that has been mentioned on the product. So how to use that because some people just uh, like apply it, rub it and it doesn't even dries off properly and so it just doesn't work. So you need to look after the directions that has been uh, given on the product and the main thing is that the alcohol concentration determines how effective the hand sanitizer gonna be fifth point several combinations are available among which alcohol based is preferred in most places so there are quite few combinations available in market and uh, along with alcohol there is uh, some ayurvedic combinations available as well but alcohol one is preferred the most and is the most effective sixth point non-alcohol based sanitizers typically contain benzalkonium chloride or triclosan Sanitizer cannot clean the contamination that can be seen and is not preferred for after toilet use. So after toilet use, hand washing is preferred over using sanitizers. Seventh point, non-alcohol based sanitizers are not really recommended to be used in general. Uh, if you really have to use then go for alcohol sanitizers alcohol based sanitizers instead of non-alcohol because they are not really as effective as alcohol ones eighth point alcohol based versions contain combination of isopropyl alcohol ethanol or n-propanol where inversions containing 60% to 90% alcohol are most effective. So the alcohol which is present in these hand sanitizers are among these. It could be isopropyl alcohol, ethanol or also named as n-propanol. And hand sanitizers having concentration of alcohol between 60% to 90% are said to be the most effective ninth point higher concentrations of alcohol don't generate more desirable bactericidal virucidal or fungicidal properties 
so as uh, in the last point we saw that it is being said that 60% to 90% alcohol concentration sanitizers having alcohol concentration are said to be the most effective one so if it is like above uh, 90% so it there won't be like uh, such a drastic change or something so that's why it has been said here that high concentrations of alcohol don't really generate uh, like uh, more desirable properties tenth point once alcohol concentration drop below 50 percent its effectiveness for cleansing drops sharply so the effective uh, concentration is 60 percent to 90 percent if it drops below the 50 percent then its effectiveness is reduced to a great extent 11th point 70 percent is the most effective concentration of isopropyl alcohol for disinfection uh, recently we saw in the news that it was being recommended to use hand sanitizers of alcohol concentration of 70 percent and in this point also it says that 70 percent is the most effective effective concentration of isopropyl alcohol for disinfection 12th point alcohol kills the bacteria by breaking down the cell wall and further by process of denaturation which modifies the molecular structure of protein so it brings about a change in the structure of the protein and thereby disrupting the functioning and the microorganism dies 13th point Water is an important factor for inhibiting or destroying the growth of pathogenic microorganisms with isopropyl alcohol. So in these hand sanitizers along with isopropyl alcohol, water is available too which plays an important role. 14th point, 70% isopropyl solutions penetrates the cell wall more completely which permeates the entire cell, coagulates all proteins and therefore the microorganism dies. So how 70 percent isopropyl solution is most effective is because it completely enters the cell wall and uh, spreads throughout the entire cell and then brings about the change in the structure of the protein thereby blocking the functioning and the microorganism dies 15th point 70 percent isopropyl alcohol is less flammable and is also economical so the 70 percent concentration is less flammable compared to other concentrations and is also economical that is cheap 16th point moisturizing agents such as glycerol and aloe vera are added to prevent dryness it cause dryness like uh, these uh, hand sanitizers cause dryness like real quick so it is advised to follow up with the moisturizer after every time you use sanitizer 17th point fragrances are added to but are discouraged due to the risk of allergic reaction in a lot of sanitizers fragrances are added but uh, a lot of people have allergic reactions to that so it is not really recommended 18th point on one hand it is protecting us from microorganisms then on other hand it is weakening our immune system studies show that an ultra clean environment particularly early in life can contribute to reduce the immune defenses later on it may be helping us by killing the microorganisms but then ultra clean environment is not really needed because then our immune system won't be like get used to it and uh, it would lead to the weakening of immune system so a neat and clean environment is advised to have in your surrounding and to maintain that but ultra clean is not really needed 19th point so we must try to avoid the use of hand sanitizing in the home and for newborn babies and kids 
Use them when you have no access to soap and water for hand washing. Hand washing is more effective than sanitizing. So we must try to avoid the use of sanitizer in the home, not during this pandemic. During this pandemic, we have to use that because uh, it is very necessary. But in general, when our lives were like normal, there was no pandemic, nothing, no virus. So then it's not really needed to use these, at least not in home. Uh, you can use it outside, like in public places, but not at home. And it must also not be used by newborn babies and kids, for it will weaken the immune system. As in the last point, it was said that an ultra clean environment, particularly early in life, that means in childhood, can contribute to reduced immune system. Twentieth point. Sanitizer works against a variety of microorganisms but not spores. So spores is a microorganism on which these sanitizers are not effective. Now we'll talk about a little bit of uh, OCD. OCD is a basically obsessive compulsive disorder. Let's look at the points on this. There are some people who are obsessed with hand washing and sanitization that they take exacting care in public by avoiding touching surfaces that may be germ infested and frequently use hand sanitizers and antibacterial soaps in an effort to minimize risk. So there are some people who like throughout the day they'll be washing their hands using the hand sanitizers. They won't be touching this surface, that surface, they won't sit here, sit there. And all this because of uh, these germs, bacteria and virus, they think that they are present everywhere and they'll harm them. So the next point is, for most, these precautions put their concerns to rest and are part of their daily routine. For some, however, concern about cleanliness and germs is an obsession and leads to compulsive, often ritualized behavior. So it becomes a part of like our daily life if that will frequently do hand washing hand sanitizing after doing anything literally anything so it becomes like a ritual for us that we have to perform no matter what third point says obsessive fear of germs or dirt and the compulsion to wash the hands over and over is one of the most common manifestations of obsessive compulsive disorder. So it is like a OCD of hygiene. Obsessive compulsive disorder is a disorder wherein a person performs a certain rituals repeatedly in order to avoid a particular thought. Let's look at the next point. Obsessive compulsive disorder is a mental disorder in which a person feels the need to perform certain routines repeatedly called compulsions or has certain thoughts repeatedly called obsessions. The person is unable to control either the thoughts or activities for more than a short period of time. So as I said earlier, next point says there is clear distinction between concern with cleanliness and OCD and suggest that anyone suspecting the disorder ask himself or herself these questions. So look at the questions. Answering yes to several of these questions might indicate obsessive compulsive disorder and warrant a consolation with an experienced psychologist. 
The disorder is rarely treatable. No one needs to live with anxiety and depression caused by obsessive thoughts and compulsive behavior. And you must not be embarrassed for this disorder can come to anyone. So better go and consult a good and experienced psychologist if you have any doubt. Thanks for watching. Keep learning.